Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to discuss whether Hilton has become better than Hyatt. So for anyone who's a frequent watcher of my channel, you know that I am a big Hyatt fanboy. I stayed at some pretty cool Hyatt properties this year, like the Park Hyatt in Kyoto, the Andas out in Munich, and also the Hotel Ryzen out in Stockholm, Sweden, where I had my own personal sauna in my room, which I found to be pretty awesome. I've been a World of Hyatt globalist, which is Hyatt's top tier status for the past few years, and I will be requalifying to be a globalist again next year, where I have some pretty epic Hyatt hotel properties booked up. But although I mainly stayed at Hyatt properties this year, I also stayed at a few Hilton properties. Most of them were lower end, but one of them that I stayed at that was a higher end Hilton property was the Conrad in Osaka. I have other Hilton properties booked, and I'm gonna be getting some really good value for my Hilton points. And in the last year, Hyatt has done a number of not so favorable changes to their properties within their award chart. They also lost SLH to Hilton, and they acquired Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but for anyone who wants to redeem points with Hyatt, this ends up being a terrible deal to you. So this ends up having me ask the question of, has Hilton become better than Hyatt? The way I'm gonna compare Hilton and Hyatt is gonna be with a few different categories. First, I'm gonna look at using their cards. After that, I'm gonna look at redeeming their points. Then I'm gonna look at the quality of their properties. And then lastly, I wanna look at, if you happen to be a loyal customer to them, what type of benefits and treatments do you end up getting for your loyalty? So first, let's look at cards. Now this one ends up being a pretty easy decision because not only does Hilton have better cards than Hyatt, Hilton has better cards than any hotel program. And honestly, if you were looking to get yourself a new card, Hilton cards are probably better than 90% of the other cards that are available for people to get, as long as you like to stay at Hilton properties. The Aspire card, which is Hilton's top tier card, grants you diamond status just from getting the card. You also get bi-yearly resort credits, and you get yourself a free night award certificate that is the best free night award certificate in the game. And if the $550 annual fee of the Hilton Aspire card is a little bit too rich for your blood, we can drop down to the Hilton Surpass card that has a significantly lower annual fee, but also still gives you gold status with Hilton and quarterly credits. Hilton does have a business card, but I felt that ever since they've changed the business card, that it has become worse than what it previously was. They also have a no annual fee card, which isn't the great when it comes to earning, but when you end up looking at what you can get from the card, such as the ability to redeem your points to get a fifth night free with silver status, and also the welcome offer that comes with the regular Hilton Honors no annual fee card. For a no annual fee card, I don't know if there's a better sign up bonus than the Hilton Honors card. You're either gonna get yourself a free night award certificate and a bunch of points, or you may end up getting yourself points for the sign up bonus that probably end up equaling out to about $500 worth of Hilton stays. How many other cards that have no annual fee can get you an easy $500 worth of value just from their sign up bonus? When you compare them to the Hyatt cards, it's not even close. First off, the Hyatt cards, when it comes to their welcome offers, have been becoming worse and worse over the years when it seems like every other card out there has either been getting the better welcome offers over the years or have been having historically high offers over the past few years. Now, I do like the personal world of Hyatt card because I think that's one of the easiest cards to get yourself positive value with. All you have to do is just redeem the free night award certificate that comes with the personal Hyatt card at a property that's gonna end up being worth more than $100 for the stay which is pretty much every hotel you're gonna be staying at in 2024. But after using the free night award certificate, you have to put in a lot of work with the World of Hyatt card to get yourself anywhere near the level of value that could be offered from something like the Hilton Surpass card or the Aspire card. And when it comes to the Hyatt business card, it's not an absolutely horrible card, it's just nowhere near the level of any of the Hilton cards, so it's not really even worth discussing, which ends up meaning that Hilton gets the easy win when it comes to cards. Next, we're gonna look at redeeming points. Now, I know that some people may look at this and go, well, this is a pretty easy choice since Hyatt points are worth more than Hilton points, but the reality is, is that you can earn Hilton points at a much faster rate than you can earn Hyatt points. So this ends up making it a little bit more challenging to decide which one has better redemption value. A property that I have booked is the Conrad in Tokyo. Now, this property costs 95,000 Hilton Honors points per night, and it usually ranges between $700 to $900 when it comes to cash price. And in fact, the night that I'm gonna be staying there, it actually is gonna be over $1,000 a night to stay there. However, I think this ends up being because the time of year that I am gonna be going to this property. Now, if you wanna stay at this property for five nights, you could do this for only 380,000 Hilton Honors points because if you happen to have one of the Hilton cards, you get yourself the fifth night for free. The cash cost to stay at this property for five nights on average would be over $4,000. And also, the ability to find standard rooms available with Hilton, I found to be a lot easier as compared to with the World of Hyatt program. So even though Hyatt points may end up being worth more, there are a lot of properties that you may want to stay at that just don't have any standard award availability for the times you're looking to stay there. The ability to get 380,000 Hilton Honors points really isn't that hard. 
You could either get yourself a couple of Hilton cards, or you could transfer over some of your membership war points over to your Hilton Honors account, getting yourself two Hilton Honors points for every one membership war points that you transfer over. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless there is a transfer bonus happening to Hilton, but if you do end up doing it during a transfer bonus and you do end up staying at one of Hilton's top tier properties like a Conrad in Tokyo, you can easily get yourself one cent per point in value for your points, which would mean that if you did end up transferring over one membership war point over to Hilton, you'd be getting each membership war point giving you two cents per point in value. Earning Hilton points is easier, finding standard room availability with Hilton is easier, and also the fifth night free benefit is something that the World of Hyatt program does not offer. And even if you don't happen to have any Hilton points or any membership or war points, you still could get yourself Hilton points from buying them when they're on sale for a very reasonable price at just a half a cent per point, which can end up making it make sense to just buy Hilton points to be able to stay at some of these top tier Hilton properties. Like say for example, you wanna stay at the Conrad in Tokyo for the nights that I was talking about, for you to buy 380,000 Hilton Honors points, it would cost you $1,900 to purchase the points required to be able to stay five nights at the Conrad in Tokyo. Now I know that there's probably a lot of people who don't wanna to have to pay $1,900 to stay five nights at this property, but just remember that this is a property that is a luxury property that would end up costing usually close to like $700 or $900 a night. So if you end up looking at how much you're gonna be paying, if you end up buying the points for this stay, you're looking at an average of $380 a night, while still high, it's significantly less than close to $1,000 a night. So it isn't really a bad exchange if you do value staying at top tier luxury properties. But although I gave you all of that counter argument for Hilton, it's still pretty hard to value them over World of Hyatt points. The thing about World of Hyatt points is that I love to recommend them for people to use because of the fact that it's so easy to get yourself good value for your points just from redeeming your Hyatt points at normal Hyatt properties. If you can avoid the Mr. and Mrs. Smith properties, you're probably gonna easily get yourself two cents per point with redeeming your world of Hyatt points. With Hilton, you mainly have to stay at top tier Hilton properties to get yourself good value for your points. Whereas with Hyatt, while you can get yourself really good value for your points if you stay at the Alila Ventana Big Sur or the Park Hyatt in Kyoto where I got over four cents per point. I also stayed at the Hyatt Regency in Mexico City during Mexican Independence Day where I got myself like more than double that in value for my world of Hyatt points. So Hyatt does win, but I do feel that it's pretty close because most people probably won't even recognize the fact that Mr. and Mrs. Smith is gonna give them bad value for their points. And also SLH can end up giving you really good value for your Hilton points. Next, we're gonna look at better properties. Now I find this one to be pretty tough to choose which one has the better properties. Because on the lower end, I would rather stay at a Hyatt place versus a Garden Inn. While on the higher end, I probably consider Waldorf's to be better on average than Park Hyatt's. But we're gonna look at all of the top tier Hyatt properties, such as also being like Thompson Hotels, Andas, and Alila's as compared to LXR's and Conrad's. I would prefer the Hyatt properties when it comes to the top tier collectively as compared to the top tier collectively for Hilton. But one of the things that's holding me back from giving Hyatt the win are the small luxury hotels of the world. SLH properties used to be partnered with Hyatt, but now they're partnered with Hilton. And since you can redeem your Hilton points to stay at SLH properties, this counts as being within the Hilton program. Sure, you can say Hyatt has Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but many Mr. and Mrs. Smith properties are also part of SLH, and no one wants to pay 300,000 World of Hyatt points to stay just one night at a Mr. and Mrs. Smith property somewhere in New York. So if you were to ask me, I would say that I prefer to stay at World of Hyatt properties but if I'm gonna to try to be as objective as possible, with the addition of small luxury hotels of the world, I would say that Hilton squeaks away with the win when it comes to having better properties. Let me know in the comment section down below, which one do you feel has better properties? Is it the world of Hyatt or is it Hilton with the addition of small luxury hotels of the world? And lastly, we're gonna look at what you get for loyalty benefits with these two different programs. So one thing that's great about Hilton is that you don't actually have to be loyal to get the loyal benefits with the Hilton Honors Program. If you get either the Hilton Aspire card or the Surpass card, you get yourself the loyalty benefits from getting either diamond status or gold status. So just from getting gold status with the Hilton Surpass card, it only costs you $150 to have that card to get all the benefits of gold status. These benefits include upgrades, additional points when spending at the property, and also either free breakfast or a property credit. This would only end up costing you $150 from getting yourself the Hilton Surpass card. And if you are someone who does frequently stay at Hilton properties, I think you can easily get yourself 3X that in value. Now Hyatt does have the best top tier hotel status in the points miles game, but it is difficult to get as it does take 60 elite nights to be able to reach global status. 
Now you can use the card to help you get there. And sometimes there are promotions to give you double nights, but as a whole, to reach top tier global status with 60 elite nights is tough. But once you reach 60 elite nights, that is where the fun begins. And I say when you reach 60 elite nights is where the fun begins because you could end up doing a status match and do it with 20 elite nights to get yourself globalist. And while I do think that globalist is really good, I don't think that getting just regular globalist is the greatest thing in the world. Is it better than having diamond status with Hilton? I believe so. But would I ever try to reach 60 elite nights if I only got globalist and no other benefits on my way up to getting that? No way. I don't think that doing a status match to chase after globalist to only have globalist, not the other benefits that come with reaching globalist up at 60 elite nights is worth going after as compared to just getting yourself the Hilton Aspire card to get diamond status with Hilton. Globalist is very nice, but what makes it the best to me is all the milestone benefits you end up getting when you are reaching the 60 elite nights to get to Globalist. When climbing up the milestone ladder to reach 60 elite nights to get Globalist, you also get hotel lounge passes, guest of honor awards, free night award certificates, and my favorite, sweet upgrade award certificates. Getting five sweet upgrade award certificates on your way up to reaching Globalist is absolutely incredible. And these aren't like the sweet upgrade award certificates you may end up getting with something like Marriott, where they aren't guaranteed. These ones are not only guaranteed at the time of booking for either a paid stay or a point stay, but also you can get up to seven nights in this suite per certificate. So I think that Hyde ends up being better with loyalty only if you end up reaching the top tier status. But if you're not gonna be reaching the top tier status, the reality is, is that you can get yourself so much value from having either gold status or diamond status, and it's not gonna cost you very much to be able to obtain either one of these. So since more people are not gonna be reaching Hyatt's top tier status, Hilton loyalty will end up giving you more value than Hyatt loyalty. So who do I think is better? Although I am a huge Hyatt fanboy, if I'm trying to be as objective as possible, when I end up looking at Hilton's cards, they are better. When it comes to the ability to earn their points, you can earn Hilton points so easily. And when you are gonna be redeeming Hilton points, you can redeem them for standard rooms, in my opinion, a lot easier than you can with the World of Hyatt properties. Hilton has super nice properties, and the loss of small luxury hotels in the world has really affected, in my opinion, the World of Hyatt's portfolio. So because of that, I'm gonna give Hilton the win. Now, am I gonna switch over to being a Hilton fanboy? No. But I do see the value in the Hilton program. And I think that they are either equal to or greater than the world of Hyatt. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below. Which one do you end up thinking has the better program? Is it the world of Hyatt or is it Hilton? Now, if you haven't had any questions about either one of these programs, you can drop it down in the comment section down below and I'll do the best I can to answer it. If you haven't been interested in any cards, check out my links in the description box to learn more. If you do decide to use any of my links, it does really help out the channel and I'll be incredibly thankful for your support. And if you haven't realized this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.